Good morning and welcome to everyone. We're so glad to see you all here. Thank you for joining us today at Shoalhaven Baptist Church. A special welcome to those who are visiting with us today. Today is a, a special day and an exciting day for Sister Beck and for really for all of us as we celebrate what the Lord is doing in her life and as we see the Lord working in the hearts and lives of people. That's an exciting thing. So welcome and thank you for being here today. If you could do us just one favor for our service today, if you do have a phone or something that could ring during the duration of the service, if you could just go ahead and turn that off or put it on silent, we would really appreciate that. That way it's not a distraction to you or to anybody else that would be most helpful. I want to read you a verse before we go ahead and sing our first song for this morning. It's from the book of Philippians. The Bible reads in chapter 2, beginning from verse 9, it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, speaking of Jesus Christ, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Some wonderful verses there speaking of our great Saviour and a future day that will come where every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But what better thing to do than to do that now? Don't wait for that day when everyone will bow, when they see the Lord Jesus Christ as the King sitting on a throne. Why not do that now freely uh, with a joyful heart? So we're going to do that today. We're going to sing some songs that lift up our Saviour. And so you have a hymnal there and you can follow along and sing along as best you can or as best your ability. We're going to start with song number 12. So if you can find that and let's all be up standing. We'll, we'll sing standing up. And we're going to sing all the stanzas of hymn number 12. All hail the Amen. Wonderful singing. We're going to open in prayer at this time, so let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we can meet here at, at this church today. Lord, we thank you for the lyrics of the song that we've just sung. Lord, indeed, our hearts want to praise you today. Lord, we want to use the gifts and the abilities that you've given us. Lord, the voices to sing to you. Lord, we want to praise you. Lord, indeed, you are worthy. Lord, we thank you for what you've given us this day, a place to meet, Lord, we thank you for those that have taken time to come to join together. Lord, we thank you for this church. We thank you, Lord, for your word, that we can open it, that we can read it, we can learn from it. And Lord, ultimately, we can be changed by it. 
Lord, I pray that as we meet today, your spirit would meet with us. Lord, I pray that you would do a special work through the preaching of your word today. Lord, we pray as we also have the opportunity to witness a baptism. Lord, I pray that you would encourage all of us, Lord, with the work that you do in the hearts and lives of individuals. Lord, we do thank you for your goodness. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Again, thank you for being here today. Thank you for being on time and a special welcome also to our visitors and for those who are joining us uh, online. Uh, there are a few that do that and so we're glad that you can join with us through the video link. Just a couple of brief announcements. We won't labour the point but it's a regular week for us here at Shoalhaven so that means there'll be a Bible study on Wednesday night. There'll be the ladies meeting Thursday morning at 10 o'clock here at the church. There will be the Old Testament history class continuing on Thursday night at 7 o'clock right here at the church for those who are interested in that. Friday we'll have our young people's ministries beginning from 4.30 with Kids Club, followed by the youth and young adults at 6 o'clock. So do uh, take advantage of that. And if you are a part, be here and invite someone to come along. A great time for our young people on Friday night. So do be here for that. There are a couple of things coming up as far as special activities. Next Saturday is our couples afternoon tea, our marriage emphasis. So we want to uh, have our couples come out for that. If you haven't, uh, let the... Pastor Hall know or Mrs. Hall know that you're coming, please do uh, try and do that as soon as possible. Uh, that way that they can make catering arrangements and so forth. There is a small cost attached to that of $10 per couple. So please also do try and get uh, ahead with that. If you can take care of that, that would help and be a real blessing. But that is next Saturday starting at 2 o'clock. So do uh, note that down and, and do what you need to to be here. Next Sunday will be uh, regular again with Sunday school in the morning at 10 and then our main service at 11. A couple of weeks time on Saturday the 21st of September, we do have a youth rally up in Sydney held by Metropolitan Baptist Church. So for our young people, most of you should already know that that's happening, but if you don't, uh, please do try and be a part of that. There will be transport available uh, if you do need that. So that'll be on the 21st. So do uh, make note of that. We do have a team that's gonna compete in the volleyball so if you can be a part, that would be great. If not, pray for us. Pray, not that we would win, because I don't think our chances are great of that at all. But just pray that we would have a good time, that we would be injury free, and maybe that we would be an encouragement uh, to another church as they would beat us, that we would be good, good losers perhaps. So that'll be a bit of fun on the 21st. Then, I know this is a long way away, but October 19th, if any of you can compute that far in advance, uh, there will be an ordination service here for our missionary, the Harris family that are up in Ipswich in Queensland. So they'll be here for that weekend and there'll be an ordination service for Sam on the, su on the Saturday. I should get this right. Saturday afternoon and then Sunday they'll be with us as well uh, in the morning services. So do, do make note of that uh, if you can. As we've already mentioned and as you should all know, there is a baptism right after the morning service today. And that's going to be taking place just down the road here at the motel. So what we're going to do is after the service is done, we're not going to, we're not going to mingle too much here. We're going to try and make our way down there promptly. It's probably best to walk. If you can't manage the walk, I'm sure you can get in the car and that's not going to be a problem. But most of us are just going to go on foot. We're going to walk down. And as you go into the motel, the pool's right there on the left-hand side. So you shouldn't be able to miss it. And we'll be gathering there for the baptism. And then once that takes place... You're all invited to come back and we would encourage you to do so. There's going to be food here at the church. There's going to be lunch. So don't miss that part. Make your way back right after that and we're going to enjoy lunch here together. You don't have to stay for very long, but just come and enjoy a bite to eat and that would be a great way to spend some time together. Let's have a quick look at our memory verse for the month before we keep singing. Let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 Many of you have a Bible there or a verse card that you can take advantage. If anybody would like a verse card that doesn't have one, just raise your hand up and Pastor Hall will, will get you one real quick. A couple of hands down the front and over this side too. Okay, let's say that together, beginning with the reference after two. One, two. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Great job. A couple more weeks to learn that, but I think that's not going to be an issue for most of you. Let's look at uh, another song then. 401. 401. You can remain seated for this song. Open my eyes. Sing it out on the first. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. Spirit divine on the second. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth now send the sleep. And while the scriptures fall on my ear, everything falls within some Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy Thank you for joining with us. This time we're going to take up an offering. So I'm going to invite Brother James if you'll make your way to the front to pray for us. For our visitors, this is not something that uh, we force anybody to take part in. It's what we call a free will offering. So please don't feel obliged to give in any way. Feel free to let the bag pass. But this is something we do as members of this church uh, to give back to the Lord, uh, to what he's given first to us. Obviously, it takes uh, money to run a church to keep the lights on. But uh, the Lord is good to us, so feel free to give from the heart today and uh, the Lord will bless. Brother James, if you'll come, thank you. Let's pray. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the church and we thank you, Father, for the preaching of your word. And Heavenly Father, we do pray for the offering this morning that the blessings you've given us, Lord, can go out to others, that your love can be shared out in the world. And Heavenly Father, please keep providing for the missionaries. And Father, please help them to reach the lost out there abroad. And Father, we pray for our ministry work here in Nara. Heavenly Father, may the Holy Spirit draw those that do not know you. May it draw them to come to know that Jesus Christ died to pay for their sin, that he rose from the dead and they can be justified by their faith in that good news message. Heavenly Father, we just pray for the preaching this morning as well. Please help us to be sanctified, Lord, and draw nigh to you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Thank you to our musicians. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was teaching his disciples, he told a story by way of illustration to help them understand a truth. And he told a story about a wise man and a foolish man. And I think many of you know the song and you know the story pretty well. There was a man that built his house on the sand and guess what happened? The house fell down. But there was a man that built his house on a rock and that house stood firm. And the Lord Jesus Christ likens himself to that rock, that strong foundation that we can build our lives upon. And that's what the hymn we're going to sing is written about. We're going to sing 464, How Firm a Foundation. Let's be upstanding for this one. Let's sing it all the four verses. How firm a foundation. going to keep on singing with our last song for this morning one that i'm sure most of you know 628 628 jesus loves me a simple truth but so profound let's sing it together jesus loves me jesus loves me this i know
sing the chorus one more time without the music. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, our youngest children will be dismissed to go to creche with the workers. Pastor Hall is going to come and preach for us today. So Pastor Hall, why don't you come? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pastor Reeve. Thank you, musicians and uh, all of you singers out there. It's good to uh, have uh, Karen with us and her daughter, Sarah. I was going to make lots of comments on how wonderful that name is for a daughter, but there are lots of other daughters in this room not named Sarah. So we'll just keep that as a secret. Uh, I have a daughter named Sarah, so, uh, but she's not my only daughter, so I can't go any further with that. Okay. Um, we also have some other visitors with us this morning. You can open up your Bibles to Matthew 7, if you would, please. But we've got uh, Paul here with us, and Tim is with us. Uh, welcome. We've got uh, Eddie and Kate are with us. Now, Dr. Annie is back with us. Make sure you say hello to her. And she brought her mom and dad. So uh, John and Juliet are here as well. And uh, I think that is everybody. I hope I didn't miss anybody that's visiting. But it's pretty exciting what we've got going on today. Uh, Sunday is my favorite day of the week. It's my best day of the week. And uh, it's even more special than usual today. Uh, I'll get right into the message. I, I want to speak on uh, four lessons that should not be neglected. Now, we're blessed today to be part of a church service that has uh, many of the marks of a New Testament uh, biblical church service. We've, we've got Bible, we've got prayer, we've got uh, worshiping the Lord, uh, there's fellowship and friendship and, and friendliness and uh, truth has already been taught this morning in, in the Sunday school class. Uh, it's going to be taught and preached. Uh, it, it, that's just uh, one of the things we try to do here all the time. The Savior is exalted. Uh, the saints are edified. And uh, sinners are evangelized. And if you're saying, Who, who's he calling sinners? It's all of us. We all need to be saved. Uh, we all need to be evangelized. Hear the good news of the go uh, the good news of the gospel, uh, that the Lord Jesus died on the cross, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day uh, for our sins so that we could be saved from our sins and saved from hell. And uh, we like to get that truth out. Uh, uh, there's recently saved people here, uh, people who are growing spiritually and making decisions. And, and we see that in church services and in our fellowship and as we talk to people and, and uh, as, as you watch and get to know one another. Uh, we even have a baptism planned uh, after the service today and and I put this last and it's probably about where it should be but some people sometimes let it slip a little bit higher and that is we have a luncheon uh, planned today after the service uh, so these are all good wonderful things uh, now I'd like to see more salvations more baptisms uh, just like they saw in the book of Acts uh, I'm glad we don't have the persecution and the martyrdom that uh, they had in the book of Acts and in parts of the world today, too. So thank the Lord for the freedom we have. Uh, but yes, uh, God, uh, his blessing and his love is, is evident here. And uh, don't take those things for granted. Uh, to get any better than uh, all of this, we'd have to be in heaven. And these things we looked at that I just listed a moment ago, uh, they are evident here, but they're not present in every church that you would attend, that you could attend. Uh, I've been to, well, I haven't been there. I've had people come to church and tell me, what's, they've asked me, what's that book that you're using? <laughs> it's the Bible. Oh, our church doesn't use that. Um, prayer and worship. But, you ever been to a church that's not friendly? Mm. Anyway, uh, we don't want to take these things for granted. But you all being here is uh, uh, making, uh, that's something we don't take for granted either. That's what's making it uh, so special. 
Uh, in spite of all the blessings, though, and all this uh, love that we get from one another, uh, from the Lord, and uh, all this positivity that, uh, that we do enjoy, that we can enjoy, uh, there are things that we endure for now that are negative or hard uh, or even undesired. And we're going to look at some of them today. We're going to look at uh, some things from, from Christ's Sermon on the Mount. Uh, five things that the Lord Jesus gives us in Matthew 7 and, and one reaction of the multitudes uh, who followed him uh, that we'll look at in, in chapter 7. Now, we've been looking on Wednesday nights at the Beatitudes. They're in chapter 5, same sermon, same book, but, but uh, they're uh, a cu couple chapters earlier. The Lord starts his, uh, I, I'm still not used to using this word, I've read it enough, but his uber- famous sermon, uh, uh, this Sermon on the Mount, he starts it uh, with these Beatitudes in chapter 5. The whole message contains great truths from God the Son spoken 2,000 some years ago. And I'm going to ask if you'd look with me this morning at some lessons from the Lord Jesus Christ that we should all be careful to heed and to obey. Uh, we're going to look at two ways and the wolves. We're going to look at the telltale works and truth's wonder. Now, that's only three main thoughts, but woven in there, we're going to get uh, five uh, little lessons and one good reaction to uh, the lesson, to the preaching of the Lord. But before we do that, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I do pray that you would speak to our hearts from your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would, you would uh, empower not just the, the speaker, the teacher, the preacher, but the listeners today. Open our eyes that we might see. Lord, I pray that you would speak to your children, those who are saved, those who are Christians, and, and they know it. Lord, help them to see something that they can, they can uh, take uh, into their lives, their hearts, their minds, their home, their walk with you. Lord, I pray if there's someone listening who's not saved, I pray that they would see the wonderful truth that's in your Sermon on the Mount, that's in the other verses we'll look at. Lord, I pray that they would be convinced of their need to be saved from sin and from hell. I pray that they trust in your work on the cross, your, your burial, your resurrection. Lord, I pray that you'd be with this service. I pray that you'd be with the baptism and the luncheon to follow. We pray that you would be uplifted and glorified. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we've got uh, lessons that we should not neglect. In Matthew chapter 7, I want to look at verses 13 through 15. I want to see the two ways, the two ways that the Lord Jesus presents. Verses 13 and 15. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So there's a lesson here about false prophets in verse, uh, verse, where is that, verse 15. Jesus said, beware of false prophets. Take heed, uh, watch out, uh, be careful. People who look and act like uh, teachers of truth, uh, helpers of humanity. Jesus said they look like that on the outside, but on the inside they are really just selfish. His uh, analogy is they were bloodthirsty, devourers and uh, uh, destroyers of prey, people that they have deceived, that they want to deceive. Now, how can I avoid these false prophets that the Lord warned us about if they look so deceptive in their outward clothing, if they look just like uh, the, the sheep around us? How do we discern them? We'll look at that in just a moment. But let's look at a, another lesson here. Jesus gives a lesson about few people 
in verses 13 and 14. Jesus tells us there's a broad way that leads to destruction. If, if you've ever looked at uh, a number of gospel tracts, uh, or maybe you've just been uh, uh, going by a church service that had it out on the, on the wall or on the sign, or maybe you've seen it on the internet, but uh, I've seen pictures before of many, many, many people for, uh, seen from up above, and, and there's a wide, wide group of them uh, just heading down the path of life and uh, they're not aware that there's a cliff at the end of their path and, and flames uh, beneath that. And then there's a narrow way right beside it. And that's got a cross on it with the Lord Jesus there. And you can see a, a, a glorious looking city in, in the, at the end of that road. And that's a, a gospel track. It's a picture. And, and then after that picture or, or worked into that picture, there's an explanation uh, of really of this truth right here that Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about financial or social ruin or some other physical tragedy. The Lord Jesus uh, in, in these verses here and, and certainly in other passages of the Bible uh, is talking about spiritual and eternal ruin uh, in hell and then in the lake of fire. I want you to look with me at one of the best known passages in all the Bible. We, we sang a song about it uh, this morning, Jesus Loves Me, but turn to John chapter 3, if you would, uh, verses uh, 16 through 18. John 3, 16, you're, you're probably familiar with it. it. It goes like this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <coughs> But if you drop down to verse 18, uh, by the way, Jesus is talking here. He's, he's speaking to a man named Nicodemus who, who uh, was a religious leader who needed to be saved. He needed to be born again. Jesus told him at, at the beginning of this passage, he said, you must be born again. He said, uh, all people need uh, this salvation, this being born again. But verse 18, Jesus says, he that believeth on him, talking about God and the Son of God and in the, the, the gospel plan, he that believeth on him is not condemned. It's wonderful truth. But he that believeth not is condemned already. It's just as true, and that, that's a tragic truth. He that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So Jesus told Nicodemus uh, uh, in this passage here that, that people are condemned already until they become believers, Christians, uh, saved, uh, uh, born again. Though many people know these wonderful verses, Jesus tells us that there are only few who find it and, and make it real and, and possess it in, in their lives. How sad that is. Out of all the billions who have ever lived, uh, who are alive right now, and, and some of them just living it up, uh, not even thinking about tomorrow or, or eternity. Our new building uh, out back is called the Eternity Building. And I like that theme. And, and I like to be thinking about the future. And the Lord uh, encourages us and commands us uh, all throughout his word to be thinking about the future. But, but many people don't. Many people uh, are, again, they're alive right now and they're, they're living for the moment. Jesus said, out of all those people, only few find eternal life. You see, everyone needs to heed Christ's warning words here to find eternal life. I love quoting Isaiah 45, 22, and that's where God tells his prophet Isaiah to say this, look unto me and be ye saved all ye ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. In John 6, Peter answered Jesus. He said, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Muhammad didn't have them, doesn't have them. Uh, L. Ron Hubbard, uh, in his old book, Dianetics, uh, old, uh, you know, 
like 50 years old or 60 years old. Uh, he didn't have it, uh, even though that book became the, the basis for uh, Scientology. Uh, that's not where you find the words of eternal life. In John 17, we read this, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I, I know that's a, a bit, uh, what's the word? Uh, there, there's no exceptions there. I know that's, uh, I, I don't have the adjective written here and my, I'm brain dead for a moment. Uh, that's a bit exclusive. That's the word I'm looking for. But Jesus said, God said, look unto me. There is none else. Jesus said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. I didn't make this up. It's in God's word. Jesus warns us uh, back in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, he says, there be few that find that narrow path that leads to eternal life. And many are on the broad way that leads to destruction. There's a few other things mentioned in the verse. Uh, in, in verse 15, at least we'd find it there. Did uh, did we read verse 15? Yeah, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh, I don't know how they got that way to become a ravening wolf or a group of them, ravening wolves. Uh, we're not told. They might be saved, but rebelling against their heavenly father, teaching something wrong. I, I don't think that's the case, but we're just not told. If they are, they're disobeying the word. They're, they're uh, pricking their own conscience. Uh, they're quenching the Holy Spirit that's in them. If they're, if they're saved and disobeying and, and going contrary to what God wants, that is. But they may be saying that they are Christians, that they are believers, but they really are not. Either way, we're being warned about them here, and I don't want to be hurt by them, these ravening wolves. Jesus didn't want anyone that was following him to be hurt by these ravening wolves that are in sheep's clothing. He tells us to watch out for them. And he said that we can know them. So let's look at uh, the telltale works. Look at verses 16 through 23 with me. Jesus is continuing to teach here. He says, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? The answer is no. Uh, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them, He's repeated the same truth in verse 16 and verse 20. Now, Jesus uses the picture of trees here being known by their fruit. I love the Lord Jesus' pictures and illustrations and, and his teaching. And we're going to look at that idea, by the way. How do you feel about the words of Christ? How do you feel about the things that he says? Uh, we'll look at that at the end of the message. But here he's talking about trees being known by their fruit. Now, James and Marie and I, uh, yesterday, we were at the Exeter Markets, uh, among too many other things that we bought. Uh, we bought some passion fruit and some oranges and some grapefruit. And uh, I was asking the, the man that was selling them some questions about, you know, uh, where he lives, where the trees were, how long these will last and so forth. And, and he was just saying, eat them, eat them. Here, let's try one. He cut open a passion fruit and... I literally, I said, how do you cut that open? He said, watch, I'll show you. And uh, I've, I've tried it in the past, and it's pretty hard to cut. So uh, I saw he used a sharp knife, and I, I followed his practice yesterday. I, I followed it this morning, and it worked fine. But, uh, but look, you wouldn't go to uh, the orange tree to find passion fruit. You wouldn't go to the orange tree to find grapefruit. You go to the, the right tree. It's a, it's a beautiful illustration, and it makes sense to everyone. You would know these trees by their fruits, and Jesus said, you know people by their fruits, true. 
Now, we have to be real careful about judging and discerning what's really going on in someone's heart and where they really stand, but, but we cannot neglect what Jesus said here. He said, you shall know them by their fruits. Now, in the same way, uh, that, well, that's it. We can know what people really are like by their fruits, just as we can know the, the, the tree by its fruits. Jesus said so. So do some fruit inspections. Don't dismiss what you see. I, I would ask, I, I ask myself and I would ask you, what fruit do people see in your life? If you claim to be a, a, a brother or sister in the Lord, if you claim to be a follower of the Lord, they should see love of the brethren. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. And he was talking about the love that we have one for another. We ought to have a love of the word. We ought to be feeding on the word, hearing it preached, hearing it taught, reading it, uh, meditating on it, memorizing it, following it. Uh, do people see that in your lives? A love of the brethren, a love of the word. Do they see faithfulness to your God, to his church, to obeying him? Uh, these are fruit, and there's many others that we could list, but these are fruits that people ought to see in, in the life of a person who calls himself a Christian. But Jesus gave a, another uh, frightening lesson in this passage about people who look religious. Now, they, these ones he's going to talk about, we're going to look at verses 21 to 23. They weren't people who were ravening wolves, but they were people who looked religious. Jesus taught that people fail to possess heaven. Some people fail to possess heaven. Look at verse 21 through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, it's, it's a, at a future time, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's a, a scary passage. It's a harsh passage, but it's a true passage. It's from the Lord Jesus. These are religious people. In verse 21 and 22, we see that. They have said, Lord, Lord, whether it was in a prayer or in, uh, uh, it just sounds like a prayer, no matter how you look at it, but unless you're taking his name in vain there. Um, they're religious. They say to him, uh, again, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied, taught, preached? Have we not cast out devils? Have we not in your name done many wonderful works? These are certainly good works and religious works. They did them in Jesus' name. But Jesus said so sadly, that he will one day say to these seemingly religious people who fail to possess eternal life. He said to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now, there's, it's very instructive what he says there. He did not say that uh, they lost their salvation. They, they never had it here. He said, I never knew you. Jesus says that uh, those who come to him, he will never cast out. So these people uh, appeared religious. They did things uh, in a religious sense, but they weren't truly saved. Jesus will one day tell these people, I never knew you. So, friend, I would ask you this. Are you sure you're saved? Uh, don't count on going to church or reading the Bible or even calling uh, uh, up to heaven and saying, Lord, do this or Lord, do that. Don't even count on doing many wonderful works in Jesus' name. How many people uh, have given a big sum to charity, maybe even a church, and they're hoping that that does? Ben, that's, that's the hoping that 
is different from the hope in the Bible. I'm going to give a lot of money because I've been real bad. So I hope this makes up for it. That it won't. That's a hope that, that will get dashed. But the, the hope in the New Testament, uh, uh, the blessed hope is the assurance that we have the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and that we'll be with him in glory one day. Jesus said about these people, they never had it. So don't count on works and giving and, and uh, even uh, good words. Uh, professing Christ is not the same as possessing Christ, having him as your Savior. Uh, these people uh, are in sheep's clothing, apparently. They, they, they look religious. They, they may not be the ravening wolves that we looked at earlier, but they, they appear religious. But these people that Christ is talking to, they're on the wide, broad way that leads to destruction. Uh, they weren't on the narrow way and, and got off of it. They, they never got on the narrow way. We need to ask ourselves. Uh, uh, we're told to examine ourselves in the scriptures to be sure that we're in the faith, in, in the flock, in the fold. Are we on the broad, wide way that leads to destruction or are we on the straight and narrow way? Christ alone that leads to eternal life. Then I want to look at uh, verses 24 through 29. 24 through 29. I want to see truth's wonder here. Jesus taught that we must build our lives on a foundation that is permanent. Pastor Reeve mentioned it uh, earlier. Uh, let's read verses 24 to 27. Uh, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him in, unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. If you live in this area, you, uh, you would know about the winds and the rains and the beating and, uh, against the, the, the structures. So we had that recently. But uh, this house fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Again, it's just a beautiful illustration from our Lord, from the Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, hearing and obeying Jesus is like building your house on a rock. Um, someone built some things out here before us on uh, man-made rock, on, on concrete. And we were trying to get uh, some of that out of the way when we had to dig some holes. And it was hard. It wasn't moving. There's a retaining wall underneath our structure back there that no one's going to move. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a rock. But... Uh, Jesus is talking about building your life and, 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 uh, uh, and establishing your eternity on him, the rock, and on uh, his word, his truth. Jesus' warning here is not meant to, to stop at building physical homes that we live in or, or structures where we can meet in. The house that Jesus is talking about is one's life, the, the lives of people in, in a family, in a church, in a community, in the world. He's talking about their eternal lives, not just their temporary lives. You see, the truths of Jesus are permanent. I, I would remind you again what, what Peter said. We saw it earlier. It's in John 6, 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. His salvation is permanent. It's eternal. It's everlasting. As we were talking about uh, her baptism, uh, Beck and I went over a, a, a number of verses, but a couple of them were, were from John chapter 10. And here Jesus says in verse 28 and 29, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall 
never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So that's the truth of God. That's uh, the, the truth of being uh, established and built upon the rock, being saved uh, uh, by, by belief in the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, anything else is inferior. It won't save. It won't last. But the last thing I want to see here in Matthew chapter uh, 7 is the teachings of Jesus. They fascinated people. They fascinated people. Verses 28 and 29, And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. You see, people were amazed and fascinated with his moral and spiritual authority. The truth of what he was saying. It wasn't just his physical miracles. Some who followed Jesus all throughout his ministry wanted only to see another miracle. They wanted a little more fish or a little more bread. Uh, they wanted their uh, rheum rheumatism or arth arthritis or whatever it was. They wanted it to be removed. The, they wanted their blind friend to, to be given uh, sight. And, and those are good wishes, I guess. Those are desires that we all might have. But we need to make sure that we don't fail to recognize the truth of God, the truth of his word, uh, especially the gospel truth and how to grow and, and be obedient to him and have a life that is blessed by him, that he's smiling upon. Some just wanted Jesus to do something else for them. Some were just looking uh, for a sign, for something great to happen. And many people today are religious because of what they can get out of it. Some are even wolves in sheep's clothing. You say, how do you know that? Brother Hall, well, we just saw it in the Lord's teaching. Many all around us are religious just to get some food, just to have some friends, maybe to see a miracle or two. And these people who are in it for the wrong reasons, sometimes they're just in it because it's peaceful. They, they see love and they see happiness but they never get saved or they, they never make these truths their own. Maybe they say, I like this. I like this part. No, oh, I don't want that one. <laughs> I don't want that part. You can't do that with God's will. Some people like blessings, but they don't like all the do's and don'ts. They're not into Jesus for his truths, his teaching, his, his morality. They might be into some religion that's got nothing to do with Jesus at all. Uh, at the markets in Exeter, uh, my wife saw some, well, she saw a lot of things she liked, trust me. Um, and we got a lot of things. And uh, I forget what it was now. It was next to the candles. It was on the, on the other side. Uh, there was something, and my wife just looked a little bit interested in, uh, I think it was crystals or rocks or picture, I, I don't know what, it, I can't remember now, but the lady started talking about chanting and, and uh, inner peace and, you know, like these trinkets here were almost idols or something. And I said, oh, this is not what we want. And my wife said, I didn't see that coming. I didn't think that's what that was. But anyway, that was, there's nothing about Jesus or nothing about God, nothing about his word or, or truth in that. Many people are into religious things uh, that are not of God, not of his word. Many people have idols that can't hear, that can't help. They're on the broad way that leads to destruction. So in conclusion, do the teachings of the Lord Jesus, that's, that's God the Son, do they convict you, motivate you, and inspire you? Do you find yourself amazed at his teachings? His word, his grace, his mercy, his plan, his authority. 
Are you willing to be changed by his word and his will and, and his authority? Are you willing to obey him? Are you building your spiritual house on his eternal truths or on sand? Do you appear to be religious, but you fail to possess heaven? Maybe you haven't failed at it. You just didn't know or have been putting it off. Don't put it off. You, you could turn to Christ today. Uh, you don't have to give money. You don't have to pay something. You don't have to become a member. All you got to do is uh, do, do like the thief on the cross next to Jesus. He went from rebuking and making fun to, to he watched Jesus. He saw something. His heart changed, and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Oh, well, that doesn't save someone. Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And they both died that day and went to paradise. The, uh, the sinner that uh, Jesus talked about in another portion of Scripture, he smote his heart and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus said that man went back to his house justified. His sins were forgiven. You don't have to light candles and burn incense and pay money and wish and hope and count. and, and wor It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, the Bible says. It's according to his mercy. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. So if you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, all you got to do is look up to God and say, please save me. I believe in this wonderful plan of your death in my place, your burial, your resurrection three days later. Please save me from my sin and from hell. What do people know about you, me, by, by watching us? What do our fruits prove? Do the fruits of our lives prove us to be Christians? Are you sure you're one of the few people who will get to heaven because you're on the narrow road of, of believing in Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven? Or are you one of those that Jesus mentioned who are on the broad way that leads to destruction? You got any ravening wolves around you? I, I pray there's none in this room. That's a P-R-A-Y. You got to be careful that you're not prey, P-R-E-Y not being preyed upon by such a destructive creature. By heeding the words of the Lord Jesus, you can have all these problems or dangers dealt with. You can have all the good, all the blessings, if we would just heed his lessons. Would you bow your heads for just a moment? We'll sing a song in just a moment. Pastor Reeve will come up. The musicians will come up. Uh, if, if God spoke into your heart, uh, you can join in on the song for sure, but, but, uh, but say yes to whatever the Lord's been dealing with you about. Say, wow, I'm glad that, I'm glad that uh, Beck is getting baptized. I, I haven't been baptized. I, I'd like to get baptized. If, if you want to do that, then, then let us know about that. If you say, you know, I, I've heard about this salvation, but I put it off. I want to get saved. You could take care of it today. You don't have to talk to me, but you certainly could. You could talk to Pastor Shellebear. All you have to do is talk to God and say, yes, Lord, I believe. Turn to him. Uh, maybe there's uh, something in your life that you've been building or working on, and it hasn't been according to God's plan. You want to you stop building on that sand. You want to start building on the rock. Just uh, use the opportunity this morning to say, Yes, that's what I want to do for you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time you've given us. We thank you for your word. I pray that you'd bless these next moments, Lord, as we sing and as people respond to what you might have been dealing with them about. Lord, I pray that you'd bless the baptism uh, a few minutes later. I pray that it would be a time of, of fellowship, of good encouragement and, and motivation and in, inspiration. Lord, I pray that you would get the glory. I pray that you'd bless our, our time following that. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Reeve and musicians, please come.
find your hymnals if you still have it there. We're going to sing song number 511. Song number 511 as we conclude today. Goes hand in hand with what we've heard this morning. Only a sinner saved by grace. Let's be upstanding. And let's sing all the verses. 511. Nor have I gotten my what I received. Grace has been spoken since I have believed. Proceeding through it, bright I am with my only sinner. Saved by grace, only a sinner. Saved by grace, only a sinner. Saved by grace. Where would we be if not for the grace of our God? We definitely wouldn't be here. Let's pray and let's ask the Lord to bless. Father, we thank you for our gathering together today. Lord, we thank you for your word and how precious it is to us. And oh God, I pray as we think on your grace and your mercy toward each of us. Lord, I pray if there's one here today that hasn't tasted of that, hasn't experienced it, Lord, that they would come to a place today that they would put their faith and trust in you. Lord, your great love and mercy toward them. Lord, indeed, all of us uh, would just be hopelessly lost if it were not for the grace of God. Lord, I pray as we go and as we enjoy a, a time of baptism now, Lord, I pray that you would bless and we pray that you'd be honored. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for being here. And uh, if you need to use the facilities or anything, do that now. And then we're going to head straight over for the baptism. Thank you.